the instruments right. My brother Fred played drums, and of course, Maurice was with Ramsey Lewis, so he had that heavy, you know, jazz background, uh, 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 as well as the commercial background that Ron was talking about, bass guitar players, because uh, Reese also was a drummer for Chess Records. He did a lot of uh, those hit records with, uh, you know, uh, Fontella Bass. He did things on Motown, Billy Stewart. So a lot of those hit records, that's Maurice on drums. And the bass player was my bass guitar teacher, Louis, the, Louis Satterfield, who was actually uh, uh, one of the trombone players in the Phoenix Horns. So what I would do, like on Thursdays, I would do um, uh, my classical lessons with Roddy Villar from Chicago Symphony Orchestra, where I studied out the ballet book, the Samandel book, you know, and um, um, and uh, and what happened was uh, then on Sundays I'd go to Sat's house and I would like uh, learn on bass guitar. So I had kind of both worlds going on at the same time, and it was right in the middle when that whole change was going over. And what happened was that um, I, and I played with bar bands on weekends and then I was in the All-American High School Orchestra with Carmen Dragon. So I kind of had both worlds. And what happened was I started taking lessons when I was like 10 or 11. So you got to go back like 50 years, you know, I'm like, you know, I weigh about 90 pounds, the bass is bigger than me. And I started on a German bow. Uh, and so, you know, German bow and you have French bow. So I'm doing German bow and I'm doing the scales. And I'm doing them the scales. The bass is so big, the bow is so big, I fall on the floor in the lesson. <laughs> so he said, I think we need to go to French bow. And so, uh, uh, and then I started, you know, uh, you know, actually really, really getting into bass guitar, like as Ron said, you know, we got into pickups. Uh, I got an Ampeg B15 when I was 16 years old. Uh, I had enough money where I went on the north side of Chicago and I bought a Fender Telecaster and an and a Ampeg B15. I had pro gear, pro gear. I still have that B15 really? now that I had when I was 16 years old. I got all my amps. I got every amp that was part of I got the, uh, the acoustic amp Yeah, yeah, with the fuzz thing on it. Uh, I got a whole warehouse. I got every amp from every era. I'm actually going to make a, an amp museum out of it. Um, <laughs> Because a lot of the younger people, they look at the horn and say, wow, what is that? A computer? I said, no, it's an amp. Because uh, no, that, that was the ones that Larry Graham had when Sly was on the scene. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so when we got going, uh, I remember Maurice asked me, what kind of amp did I want? He said, man, what kind of amp do you want, man? That's when you know we started really getting going. I said, I want that acoustic B-15. You know, you know, not the acoustic, but acoustic amp. You know, the big, the big. You know, you got to pull it right. Came, man, I was tearing that amp up. And it still sounds good today, but it's like, you know, really tubby, you know, it's like it's got like one dimension of a sound. So, uh, uh, so, uh, and, and Reese being a, a jazz player, he had enough of jazz sense to like, you know, uh, uh, do, you know, our music in the beginning was sort of jazzy, but then commercial. So the bass guitar was really, uh, I really, really made that my main instrument, you know, with the respect of uh, Ron and and Richard Davis, who's from Chicago uh, uh, originally, and, uh, and I think he played with Stravinsky. Yeah. Yeah, you know, so I was always an admirer of all the great players, you know, and uh, and bass guitar for me, when I came to L.A., I was like 18, and uh, and I didn't, I, I started doing some record dates, I didn't do a lot, uh, I was very picky and choosy because we had something we were really working on, and I didn't want my sound to get all over it radio before we were ready and uh, uh, that background was really good for me and, and the way we recorded um, the approach we recorded was like more creative you know I didn't really uh, uh, originally I think Ron it was like three hour record dates back in the day yeah yeah you know and the budget <laughs> but, but yeah but what we did when we started our dates were like 12 13 hours you know what I mean we would like work Bigger on budget. Songs. <laughs> yeah, 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 you know, you know, and uh, because uh, Maurice insisted that we would be creative. So sometimes I'd listen, I'd play for a while, stop for a while, go back. So it was more creative. Uh, 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 and so I just really stayed with bass guitar and, and uh, you know, got into the pickups and the strings, everything that Ron was talking about. That's great. Yeah. Uh, 